Okay, so the camera shut off. I don't know what it got and what it didn't. We were working on backing up. So let's just turn it this way and hopefully it'll stay on. Okay, so now I've gotten her to back off. She falls way too close for my liking. And so I've gotten her to back up with me just uh, pushing pressure on the, the rope. So now we're going to try to back her up from wiggling. So here we go. So I'm going to wiggle back, 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 I'm waiting for one step, back, good girl. So I just got to get one step to start, and then uh, we give her a little break, and then we try it again. So first we're just trying to get the point across. Wiggle, back, 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 back. Now we got two steps. They were crappy steps, but we got two steps. So she doesn't understand wiggle the rope means back up. A lot of horses don't, so you got to teach it. Back. Now I can do it this way. Back. There she goes. So that was good. So there's lots of ways. You wiggle, and then you increase the pressure somehow with the stick or the rope or do something different. So now let's try it again. Back. She's not going back, so I'm going to go up and down. Good girl. Now she got two steps again. Now we're going to ask her again. Back. Back. There we go. So she has her space. I have mine. I don't want her in my space at all. She's got to learn respect. If they can't be close to you, they can't hurt you. That's why we want them out of our space. So I don't want her just to come up into my space and go, oh, that's friendly. No, that's her taking over. So back. See nothing happening. Back. I'm hitting the thing. That's not working, so I'm going to hit her in the chest. Okay. But if I didn't have this tool, she wouldn't be backing up if I had a little stick. Let's try it again. Back. So it takes them a while to figure this out. I don't expect her. Back. Back. So, see, I'm giving her chances. It's not to run away. It's just back out of my space. So I wiggle, wiggle harder, hit the rope, hit the class. None of that worked. So then I hit her. So now I think Pivo shuts off. She's okay, Pivo. She's not the best. So the internet goes down or something else happens. And I gotta check her because otherwise I talk to myself for an hour. Alright, let's back up. So back. Look at that. Good girl. Now every time they do something, I take the, my eyes off of them and just look around because I'm gonna take the pressure off as a reward. I don't wanna stare at them like that. So take the pressure off and reward them. You see, I don't have glasses on. I want her to see my eyes. So she's not confused on what my intent is. We wear glasses lots of times. They can't see our eyes. And so they don't always know. So back. Now you'll see I'm not giving her much time before I start asking for more. Okay? Because I have to be clear with her. I'm not waiting very long. You either back up or it amps up pretty quick. Ready? Back. Back. Now, I asked her a lot more that time, didn't I? Right there, she's shutting down. Oh. Why did I do that? Because she was going to run off that direction. Okay. So let's do it again. Okay. So back. Back. Good girl. Back. Not working. Back. Good girl, back. Look at that. There you go. Now she's fighting, her head's straight up in the air, and she don't want to do it, but she's doing it. Okay, here we go again. Back, back, back. Good girl. Clock means move. She shut down. Back. Good girl. The hardest part is don't give up. Get bigger. 
get harder, get more equipment, whatever you got to grab to get that horse to back up. She wasn't getting in. I had to go up and do it off of my hand right on the rope under her chin, I would. If I got to go get a uh, chain and put it over her nose, I would because I only have to do it that for a little bit so they understand, then you don't have to do it anymore. But if they don't understand and you don't clarify it for them, they just get more confused. Back. See nothing happening. Back. Go back to nice. Back. Good girl. I'm going to give her a couple of seconds. Back. Back. Now I lost my grip. Back. Good girl. Back. See her shutting down. Back. Back. Now this is how they all, you're a little in my space. This is how a lot of them start that don't know how to wiggle with the back up. Starts like this. It's horrible. And a week later, they're totally fine walking around no one to know I had to do this. So again, you got to amp it up, use the tools, do it over and over again. Okay, let's do it one more time and then we'll take a little walk. So I'm going to stop. She should stop when I stop. She stopped a little close. Back. So remember, I can't touch them. It's good that she throws her head when I um, move my arm. I want her at this point because I want her to know to stay out of my space. So let's back up. Back. Nothing happening. Back. Go back to nice. Go back to meaner. Back to nice. Go back to meaner. There we go. Okay. Now let's take a little walk. See if the camera follows us. So I have this stick. So if she gets close, I can wave it and keep her out of my space. If she gets close enough that I can touch her with it, then I will touch her. Whoa. Okay, so I can't have her close to me because I don't want her, I don't think the camera's turning, so I'm going to walk back. I don't want her close to me because if she gets close to me, she could hurt me. Whoa, back. Okay, so you can back up a little bit, but don't back up too much. The whole point is them to back out of your space, not you back into their space over and over again. So I'm going to stop and wiggle so she understands to stay back. So I can't take her around and get her familiar with certain things and get over spooking if I can't control her. So this is always the first step. Why am I hitting her? Because she's too close. Now I'm not hitting her at all. I'm just hitting the rope. But I got after her, and she goes, fine, I'm out of here. I'm like, you might be out of here, but you're not getting in my space. Sometimes you got to switch hands. You can swing this around you. You just keep winging it, and uh, that will usually make the horse stay out of the space if you can't see well or you don't pay enough attention enough. You just wing it, and if they come in your space, see where I can hit her? And look, I got it tangled. Nothing goes perfect. No, she's not backing up. Not backing up enough. So I got the rope here. Okay, so let's do it without the stick. So she's got to know. That's why I like these ropes with the spankers on. I, it doesn't matter if I drop the stick. It doesn't matter if the stick doesn't work. I always have something to protect myself. So let's stop. Now, can I reach her? She's pretty close. Back. Now, you see, I wasn't very nice. I was like a head mare. I'm like, get out. That's what I said. So, she would never do that to the head mare. would nail her so hard, she would never get in that horse's face again. But see here, she's trying to go towards that gate. Like, I'm getting out of here and getting away from this lady. And I'm like, no, you're on. So, wherever I take her, she should go. If I walk slow, say I hurt my leg. So 
she should go slow. But if I didn't do all that stuff ahead of time, she wouldn't have gone slow. She would have just walked over the top of me. So now I'm going to go faster. Now she's paying attention. I'm going to go slow. Watch. So if I get hurt and got to walk her home, she's got to learn. She's got to walk home that slow. She don't know what I'm doing or why. But she goes over poles. She goes through water. This is not a bad horse. She's not freaking out with that stuff. I think she was just intimidating people. So let's just stop. Is she close? Not anymore. Okay. Now what do we think? Was that enough for the day? Eh, just a little bit more. So again, I'm just walking her. Walking her different directions, over things, around things. And just making her stay out of my space. And most people don't want to do this. They're like, what's that do? It does a lot. Now she's close in my space, so I just hit her. She cut the turn. And so she's got to learn what happens when she cuts the turn and gets into my space. Okay? So it doesn't matter where I'm looking, what I'm doing. She needs to pay attention to me, and I need to be important enough that she wants to stay out of my space. But I do that by constantly stopping and testing them. See how close I am? Now, I didn't get close to her. She got close to me, so I have to show her. I know you're looking at the gate. I know you're looking for an escape. But guess what? You should just be paying attention to what I'm doing up here because I'm important. I'm the most important thing in your life at this moment. So let's watch if she cuts the turn. So a lot of horses are bad just because they haven't learned respect and they scare people. If you think, what would a horse do if that horse did that to another horse? Oh, they'd get him. They'd get him. Where are you going? You want to go over the box? So she got a little close, so that's all I did with my hand was that. Now let's try and go slow again. Just wing that just in case. Stay out of my space. So it doesn't matter if you're old or young. You just got to have the right tools to get the point across and then keep your energy up so they understand. Okay. Now somebody asked me about how you get your horse to ground tie. So... You want to make sure they respect you, they understand the way of the rope, they stay out of your space before you try to do it. And you put them on this rope, and this is what you do. You back them up. So I reward the little try, then I back them up again. <laughs> okay. Now we put the growth rope on the ground. Now she's ground tied. So what's that mean? When that rope's on the ground and I'm just standing here, she can't move. So she starts to wander off. I yank on the rope again, put her back in the same place. She walks that way. I yank on the rope, put her back in the same place. Before you practice this, you make them tired so they want to stand, so you'll be more successful. And you do this over and over again. And then what you do, you keep the rope. Don't drop it. But you make sure it's on the ground because you're trying to associate rope on the ground with her standing. She can look around. She can't move her feet. If she does, I'm going to back her up more so she understands not to move. She can, like, her foot, you see, like this, because she's, like, so afraid now. Like, I'm not even like, moving my foot because this lady's nuts. She goes like that, that's okay. She cocks a leg, that's okay. But if she takes a step forward like this, then I'm going to back her up. If she goes forward one step, she goes back four. If she goes forward two steps, she goes back eight. So I keep amping it up, and then I put them right back in the same spot, so they understand if I don't stand still, there's a bunch of work to do. Again, they can look around, but they can't move their feet. If their head goes down, that's okay, but I don't let their head go below their knees because if it goes below her knees, she's going to smell something, get distracted. It's like a dog. You keep letting smell all the bushes. It's going to keep getting distracted. Now, she moved her head, and I just put the rope on the ground. So she feels the weight of this rope. When you have those light lunge lines or just a light rope, they can't feel it. So this is where you start, and you practice doing this over and over again when they're tired. 
once they're good, then what you can do is this, and you just stand by the row or stand on it. So if they start to move, you can grab it. You do this over and over every day for five to ten minutes, and then you can increase the time. Once you get it that they'll just stand with the rope, then you stand a foot back. So you can grab it if they start to move. Okay? And you do that for a long time. Once you can do that, now I'm watching her out of the corner of my ah, 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 ah. Now see how she moved? So back. Back where she came. Good girl. So stay. Teach them just like their dog. Stay. She's not supposed to come with me. So now I'm just going to go back and forth. And I'm moving a little bit, but she needs to stay still. So I do this over and over again for days, for weeks, for months. Okay. Once I'm sure that they're going to stand, she might not because this is the first day. Then I start moving more. Now I'm not looking at her because I don't want to put any pressure on her. Okay. But I start moving around her more, and she stays there. Now, you can't practice this out in a field with grass because, of course, the grass is high enough, and they're going to grab it. Okay? So you want to practice this in arena, paddock, their stall, wherever you don't have food that they can reach or smell. Okay? And get it down really good there first, the ground tying. Okay? And you'll see what I'm going to do now is start moving further and further around her. And again, this is setting me up for failure because this is the first day I've done this. Stay. Now, she's good. She's being a statue. She's like, this lady's done crack. She's going to kill me if I move. And I hope that's what she thinks because then she won't move. Okay? So I stay relaxed. Keep breathing. Don't put any energy on the horse. Now, when I go start to go behind her, she might start moving. So what I'm trying to do is just get her used to what I'm doing slowly, and then you increase it. Remember, these are building blocks, so you increase it over time. So I would be doing this for weeks, not one day, because I want to make sure the horse is really comfortable with me. Because if she's just doing it because I'm, she's petrified of me, well, it'll work for me, but it won't work for the next person. So she's got to learn this is just the way things are. Stay. Keep your energy down. Keep breathing. I'm talking. Good girl. Good job. There you go. Now she's turning her head. That's fine because that's how she sees. And I just went in her blind spot. So now I'm just going to do it again. So I'm nonchalantly just breathing, walking. And you do this over and over again. And then when the horse is good with me just walking around him, now she moved. So I'm just going to put her back. Good girl. Stay. Stay. So I probably came closer because I'm talking. So I'm going to go a little bit further away. So I probably put pressure on her by accident. And that's why she started to move. Okay? So I want to stay far enough away that I'm not really putting pressure on her. And then over time you can get closer. When you're doing this exercise, you can't let anybody distract you or distract your horse. They can't come up and touch it. They can't come up and feed it because then the horse will immediately think it's okay to move. So they have to be a statue and you tell everybody, don't touch him. He's in uh, ground high training. And so we just do this over and over again. Good girl. So the shaking is a good release. The lowering her head is a good release. The licking her tongue is a good release. So you, you take all those things in. I can see it out of the corner of my eye that she's doing that. Okay. So I'm staying far away. I'm breathing. Stay relaxed. Don't be aggressive. If I got aggressive and got really big, it would scare her. So when you're trying to get the horse to relax, you always kind of cave your body in. You breathe. You keep yourself a little bit slumped. When you want to make the horse really do something, because it's getting in your space or you're having a problem, you become big. You get big like this. You get big with your hands. You get big with your body, okay? Think of a little chihuahua going after a German shepherd. They're like, ah, that's who you become, okay? Because a lot of us are small. So you become very big, but when you want the horse to relax, you have to relax. Make a C with your body. Keep everything relaxed. When I desensitize him, this is how you'll see me doing it. If I want the horse to move, I come up like this. So overall, I think she did really well. I'm looking to see if I have anything. Now, I'm going to go into her space. So for the first day ground tying, she did great. Now, she doesn't know my cookies, and she doesn't really understand that.
Do you want it? Now that's okay because all our cookies are different. And when they show up, they usually think, I'm poisoning them. I don't poison horses, but you can take that. So it's okay that she's not eating it or anything else. I just presented it. She doesn't want it. That's okay. All right. So now let's look at her swirl. Her swirlology. And it tells you kind of what kind of horse it is. So she has a swirl, and it's up here. That means she's very intelligent, if you believe in folk tales, which I do. So it's up here. So that says she's intelligent. And so it means she probably has outsmarted some people, but she'll figure this out if that's true. Okay. Now, she's being very sweet as a mare right now, isn't she? And this is why people like mares, because they can be sweet. So let's touch her ears and some other things. And she's like, she smells like cookies, but I don't like those cookies. So again, I'm going to get after her and make her do lots of stuff. But when I go into her space, she, she can smell me. It's okay. Now I keep my head back just in case she did something goofy or threw her head up. She doesn't break my nose because they have big, hard heads. Okay? Now mares usually aren't as nibbly as geldings are. But I think... And when she understands, she's not mean. They were just being a smart man. So mares can outsmart you all the time. So Tilly, the other day, I went to, and again, we're in our other space. I came in hers, so now this is okay, but I'm going to keep an eye on her. Um, I went to tack up Tilly. That's my horse. She's a mare. I've been riding her not a ton each week, maybe once or twice. And so she's definitely not saddle sore. So I went to put her saddle on and she pinned her ears at me and I whacked her and because uh, she pinned her ears and turned her head so I just kind of whacked her and pushed her back now why did I do that well one I know she's not saddle sore I haven't been riding her two she hasn't been worked a lot so I know it's attitude she's like I don't have to work I just get grass you ride me once or twice a week that's it we're not doing it more than that lady and I was like yeah we are I own you so yes you're going to work today so I just immediately smacked her back the next day I pulled her out again uh, to tack her up and she did a little bit I hit her again Next day, no attitude. So some of the times they're doing stuff and you think something is wrong with them, there's not. It's just attitude and them doing things. So I'm just touching her to see what she tolerates right now. But I'm not getting too close to her back end because I don't know her. But I'm sure they brushed her. She looks like a clean horse. And she's probably okay with all these things. So you got to remember, sometimes it is something's wrong with the horse. And sometimes it's behavior. So I... Always think behavior first, but I rule the other things out. So I pushed on Tilly's back, made sure she wasn't sore. I pushed on her sides, and she's not in heat. So she had no reason except for attitude. But I can figure that out in seconds where you might not stay. Figure it out in seconds. So let's see if she stays there now. Because I was petting her, so now she might just want some attention. So again, the looking around is okay as long as her feet don't move. So she's much calmer. She was very spooky when I took her out. She's much calmer, and she's learned to keep her feet still. So overall, I think she did really well. They're shooting BB guns over there, and she's just standing here. So all this is good. All right, so that's our session for the day. I hope that helps any of you having problems with your horse listening to you or something that really doesn't listen much. Okay, so I gave her a cue. I said, okay, now she can come with me so she knows she's out of it. you got to give them a cue to put them in it, like stay and a cue to put them out of it, because if there's no cue, they might not know. And from now on, she's not coming in my space. I'm going to back her up the whole time. Now, I backed her up, and she came forward, so you know what? Maybe it was only one step, but I'm like, nope. If I say back up, you stay back. So see, she came one step forward. Now, I don't care if she evens her feet out. Remember, she doesn't do it, add more. I don't care if she evens her feet out as long as it's backwards. If she's like this, I don't want her to come forward so much at this point in time because she was pushy. So I need her to make sure she backs out of our space and not go forward into it. you got to be very clear, black and white. Don't be gray. Okay? Gray's not a happy place. So make sure that they stay back. But overall, very good for the day. All right, hope that helps.